Hey everybody, how's everybody doing? All right, let's look into 2014. First of all, let's wrap up what we saw in 2013, because 2013 was the first year in many, many years, I believe since 2000, where we saw the general equities market outperform commodities, as a matter of fact. And this also means that when cost of living isn't going as much, we can actually have real growth. But it's quite surprising that this has been the year where Dow Jones S&P has been outperforming real estate, commodities, particularly gold and silver. So what's in store for 2014? Well, let's look at this article right here. Most Americans see the stock market either flat or lower by the end of 2014. Well, let me tell you something. Now, I know that surveys like CNBC can be kind of distorted because this group has a lot of trash but let me tell you something when the masses when it comes to investing do or believe in something isn't the opposite coming out true don't they get into things or believe in the situations that are quite toxic in other words the masses got into the dot-com bubble in 1999 and 2000 the masses got into real estate in the mid 2000s and the masses believed according to cnbc all american survey that gold was the best investment for 2013 second was real estate third was stock market well guess what what happened gold did worse than real estate and stock market and stocks did better than the other two so looking at that track history of what the masses believe in when i look at this article when they see that it's going to be flat or lower by the end of 2014, what does it tell you? Well, most likely we are going to rock it by 2014 because when the masses are afraid, usually it's a time to jump in. Look at this poll. 40% believe the market will stabilize. 39% will drop. Only 14% believe the market will rise. <laughs> I mean, you can pretty much get the idea. 5% think it will crash. Yes, we've been hearing the market's overheated. It's overvalued. You've got to get out. Stay away from the stock market. Oh, yeah. People. <laughs> I mean, what? It looks like a good chunk, like 5%, I believe, they're the doom and gloomers. And the 39% are the people that are just very pessimistic. They've been listening to a lot of propaganda. Sadly, a lot of people, especially in the Western world, don't have a lot of money to actually invest. <laughs> so you can pretty much see what's going on. And let's look at CNBC. Look at all the garbage they have. Jim Cramer, yeah. Let's see what's the recent toxic deal that he's going to offer. Let's look at this right here. Sales of bank home surge. Hmm. Now, certainly when they report on statistics, they can't be misleading or in a way false. But nevertheless, overall, I see a lot of trash. You can see here... That will never end QE, Dr. Doom and Gloom, Mark Faber. Yeah, listen to me. In 2013, I predict that the market's going to crash. And I predict again that it's going to crash in 2014. Listen to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm telling people to go into cash. I mean, why does this network even keep promoting this guy? Hey, Mark. Hey, Peter Schiff. Instead of just coming on TV, do you even have time to research or you just keep parroting everything nonstop? Well, speaking of that, let us look at the markets first of all. Wow, what a run-up we had. In these several months, it doesn't look overheated, seriously. We only had a slight increase from May till now. Much of it has been done in the last week or so. But... Other than that, this really doesn't look like a bubble to me. 
And when you look into the future, you got to look at the past results. Usually we do very well in the first four months, first four months or really the first half. So there is a very good possibility that the first half of 2014, we're going to have a leg up higher. And people keep saying, oh, it's going to crash. Well, it had many corrections, many buying opportunities, but it really didn't crash, did it? I don't think so. So looking into the broad scheme, yes, 2014, there's going to be lots and lots of corrections and may happen for several weeks and maybe months. But into 2014, I'm quite bullish as a matter of fact. So what do I see for the Dow Jones? Well, by the end of 2014, 18,000 to 21,000. S&P from 2,000 to 2,300. NASDAQ from 4,500 to 5,500. By the way, when it reaches all-time high of 5,000, keep in mind 5,000 is not going to be the same real value as it was in 2000. In order to catch up to the same real value, it would have to be around, I believe, 9,000. It's going to take many, many years to really, really get there. So look into the broader picture, people. And certainly, if you really want to catch in this bullish opportunity, find equities that have a good correlation with the indexes. Certainly, it looks like to me that the tech equities and the financials are going to be profitable the most. Or at least they are going to be the more profitable ones. So why are we seeing all these bullish, bullish opportunities? Well, first of all, we're seeing a lot of money flowing out of bonds and into equities. Now, certainly I don't buy into this doom and gloom hysteria that, oh, certainly the bond market is going to burst and we're going to see really a huge apocalypse of the system. I really don't buy into that, but I do believe the bonds are going to underperform the stock markets and rates have nowhere to go up or flat. That's the thing you got to understand. Look at the price earnings ratio. They aren't so high. Many equities, the popular ones, are still in the single digits and into the teens. Many of the indexes have price earnings ratio of teens and 20s. So it isn't necessarily overheated. This is the thing you have to understand. And what about earnings? They're growing. They've got great balance sheets because that is a main driver of the stock market. So other than that, it's going to be very promising for 2014 and into 2015. So, yes, there are going to be some corrections along the way, but nevertheless, it's going to be very, very bullish. So, let's look into the broader picture, because as you can see here, things look very bullish for the first four months or the first half of the year. And then things kind of stabilize in the summertime. That's what you kind of have to understand. So we may have corrections, but it kind of might be in the doldrums for a while. Real estate. Well, certainly I will tell you this. It will underperform the stock market. That's just what I will see as a matter of fact. Certainly I think real estate has been heated. Look at this. California, 21%. Seriously, who has the money? Look at the mortgage rates. Why have they been going up? Well, look at this. They've fallen. Now they're coming back up. And as we discussed earlier, housing sales are kind of going to a contraction, as a matter of fact. Then you've got to understand the banks have been holding off the foreclosures. Eventually, they're going to have to let them out. But then again, you've got to understand that all the bad loans from the 2000s decades have got to be gone sometime. So... That's certainly optimistic for the housing market. Yet again, there's going to be still a lot of foreign buyers because I think a lot of people want to get out of places like China, which have been very overheated, and come to this part of the world. So this is the kind of thing that you kind of have to understand. In addition, you got population growth. But surprisingly enough, we don't have a lot of good paying jobs being created. And by the way, we peaked at around $200,000 in around 2007, to catch up to that level, real value would have to be $250,000 for a median price of housing. So I don't see that getting there next year or so. So let's look at precious metals as a matter of fact. So it's been a pretty 
depressing and disgusting year for precious metals. Well, they had a run up, but look at this. Really this free fall. We were in the 30s. Now we're below $20. <laughs> My goodness. This is just so disturbing. Lots of people, it looks like, are getting out of precious metals and into the general stock markets. And it looks like to me that precious metals won't do very well for the next year. As a matter of fact, I see gold trading from 900 to 1500, silver trading from 15 to 25. And yeah, we may have a bullish opportunity for just a few months. That way the stackers can say, ooh, it's a great time to buy. The bull market is back. But then some people will just jump in and get slaughtered. That's just the reality of it. And as for oil, certainly it's not going to outperform the stock market, but it will, at a very good chance, outperform the precious metal. So that's what you've got to keep in mind. And by the way, I want to tell you something. I hope that 2014 will be the year where the bright people stand up like this channel, Tacos Mananeros, who've been exposing these clowns for so long, as well as my channel. And then finally, a lot of these other channels, keep in mind, will actually get slaughtered. I'm talking about the people that will experience a mass awakening where people will understand the scams, the frauds, the Ponzi's that they have been perpetuating. Or simply the people that just not giving reliable information and advice. So let's go down the list and let's talk about what exactly is going on. Oh yeah, let's look at Greg Hunter, you know. <laughs> yeah, David Morgan! $30 silver, 40 I've been keep making my bullish predictions year after year. And finally, they're going to come true. Yeah, listen to me. I'm going to keep pumping up these people. My goodness. Let's look at his channel, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look at this. Did you see that they bring these, like, women out there? I don't know. I guess they're desperate to attract some viewers. The financial system is going to collapse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at this. Oh, man. Two toxic people completely. Somebody, please call the SEC. Got a lot of exposing you got to do. Max Kaiser, Mike Maloney, full of phony Maloney baloney. <laughs> Look at this channel, Brother John F. My goodness. He's been losing a lot of viewers. That is a fact. I gotta tell you. Mike Maloney, more pumping. Yeah, listen to all my documentaries. Same thing with SGT Bull. Look at all this fear mongering. Oh my goodness. The world is gonna end. There's gonna be apocalypse <laughs> you know look at this manipulative psychology people wake up truth never told yeah he's selling more of these toxic coins so you get in a toxic situation and they've been gaining subscribers oh my gosh it's just unbelievable <laughs> like I'm telling you the masses get into things that they get blown. It's just so unbelievable. Look at these other channels. Look at me. I'm pumping all these financial survival net gold and silver. Oh yeah. <laughs> the collapse is coming. No sign of tapering! Yes, continue to listen to me. Even though just a few days ago they just mentioned that they will. Mike Shed... Who is this guy? I mean, seriously, I want to do a clip about this guy. Seriously. He deserves to be exposed. I'm not kidding. Seriously.
Finance and Liberty! Yeah! <laughs> Look at me, I'm this young fellow pumping all these maniacs. Mines are about to shut down. Yes, we've been keep hearing this for years. Silver crashed down to thirty dollars. Mines are gonna shut down. Twenty-five. They're definitely gonna shut down. Now, eventually, they'll go to five, and they'll shut down. And you still gotta keep stacking. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I mean, look at look at this guy too, Greg Manorino. <laughs> Look at me! Yeah! No taper! Oh my goodness! But they just mentioned that they're going to scale it down to $75 billion a month. Let's look at what he mentioned. More losses coming for the stock market! Oh yeah! Listen to me! Oh yes! You've got to listen to me! You've got to hear me constantly, even though the stock market just recently skyrocketed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, man, this is the master of all these people. Dollar's going to crash. Stocks are going to crash below 13,000, even though you're the one that mentioned that the Dow is going to hit 4,000 back in your 2002 clip. Did it happen? Well, it did fall a lot in real terms for several years, but it didn't come close to what you were trying to point out. Yeah! We've got to pay 15% more in prices at Walmart to support $15 an hour. How does that idea even make sense? Please, tell me. This is just so insane. How, me paying 15% more to get $15 hour wages for Walmart workers. Please, look at this manipulative psychology. People, this is your opportunity for the year 2014 to expose these people and get the truth out. And that is all I honestly ask, okay? Because karma is a you-know-what. So, let's hope for the best. And as for 2014, as for me, let's hope there's a lot of opportunities ahead. Hopefully I can move out of Southern California, expand my ultimate goal in life. And a bonus. Let's look at some flirty stuff. Ooh, look at this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, what does this tell you? Come and get me. Look at... These are like tops they made in like bow ties. Like, are these ladies really desperate for attention? Yeah, I'll be approached so many times and I'll find the best guy who has the most amount of dough... Because obviously in this tough economy, it's hard to find someone that's doing very well. <laughs> Look at this. I mean, <laughs> what does this tell you, people? Look at these outfits they're wearing. And you go to Google Images, you see, oh my gosh, just so many of these places that are selling this. Look. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. It's just so... And they even sell this in Charlotte Roos, which is a popular store across the mall. So this isn't just a few places. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, look at these gold charlatans. It's just so unbelievable. Keep pumping up the same old, same old, on and on. <laughs> Must watch. The U.S. dollar is going to collapse. <laughs> Look at me! I'm being promoted by Chris Duane! Keep listening to me! <laughs> anyway, happy holidays and wish you a profitable 2014.